हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द टॉपिक क्लाउड स्टोरेज एंड डेटा माइग्रेशन इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग स्टोरेज और द डेटा सेंटर्स वेयर दैट डेटा इज बीइंग स्टोर्ड और डेटा बेस इज बीइंग क्रिएटेड एंड द डेटा माइग्रेशन दैट मीन्स हाउ द डेटा इज बींग माइग्रेटेड फ्रॉम वन प्लेस और वन वेंडर टू एन सर्विस प्रोवाइडर cloud storage and data migration first know if you are moving data into an application computing environment or moving backup or archival data for long term storage in the cloud that means now there are two types of cloud computing services which usually organizations or the companies avail so first we need to know which kind of a service is the consumer having it or we require which kind of the service from the cloud computing services now many companies start off with storing long term backup data in the cloud others with office 365 still others work with application providers who extend the application environment to the vendor owned cloud like oracle or sap in all cases the companies need to understand storage costs and information security such as encryption the companies will also need to decide how to migrate the data to the cloud second now that was the first thing which companies need to know this is the second thing which you need to keep in mind while accessing cloud storage or data migration to the cloud once you are storing data in the cloud you need to manage it for cost and security then never assume that your cloud providers are managing your applications for you they will protect your active data with backup and built in redundancy and are obligated to provide certain security measures but if you need strong security like two factor authentication or need to prove compliance with cloud storage then you will probably need to invest in third party cloud based software another thing which we have here is cloud migration or data migration so cloud migration here is the process of moving data applications or other business elements to a cloud computing environment from the traditional database or traditional IT environment there are various types of cloud migrations an enterprise can perform one common model is the transfer of data and applications from a local on premise data center to the public cloud however a cloud migration could also entail moving data and applications from one cloud platform or provider to another a model known as cloud to cloud migration here it performs the same task a third type of migration is to uncloud that means moving from the cloud or moving away from the cloud also known as a reverse cloud migration or declouding where data or applications are moved off of the cloud and back to a local data center now benefits and risk of cloud storage migration migrating data to cloud takes a lot of work and some level of risk and here the consumers or the companies need to carefully weigh benefits and risks before taking on the cloud storage migration project here the companies or the consumers do not have to go it alone migration tools are available to assess applications for large scale migrations understand benefits and risk that means the companies should understand or make a deep study of the benefits and risks and what is involved in migrating a specific application to the cloud now what are the benefits first is scalability 
द स्केलेबिलिटी ऑफ द क्लाउड इज वन ऑफ इट्स मेजर असेट्स दैट मीन्स इट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग फॉर द कंपनीज दैट अ क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइड्स If your backup and archival data is consuming large amounts of storage, then the cloud can provide cost-effective scalability with dynamic provisioning. The same benefits holds for large volumes of active application data such as video and games. Then another thing here is lower costs. but we are not sure how lower it is maybe it is less than the company is spending now or maybe it can be more than the company is spending now but somewhat cost is a factor in but somewhat cost is a factor in cloud storage or data migration cloud computing can reduce operational costs by shifting to a subscription model the company also spends less capital buying new storage equipment and it spends less time managing on premise storage however the companies should watch their cloud storage costs storing data above your basic capacity threshold gets very expensive and frequent data retrieval comes with significant costs that means you are getting the benefit but then you have to pay for it if you are crossing the threshold that means it will can cost you a lot and if you are going for frequent data retrieval programs then also the costs can increase another benefit here is offload some management tasks it spends significant time provisioning load balancing and capacity planning for stored data it retains responsibility for their cloud based data but can offload tasks like storage provisioning troubleshooting and patching upgrading storage intelligence tools now coming back to the risks of cloud storage migration compliance and data protection issues even if the company has migrated the data to the cloud the company is ultimately responsible to prove compliance compliance that means the agreement between the service provider and the consumer or the end user you are also responsible for protecting your data long term ideally moving it into a searchable archive for e discovery and compliance then another risk is proprietary technology if you are using or if the company use proprietary technology in on premise such as worm compliance here you might need to look at third party vendors to supply that feature in the cloud that means now when the companies are dealing with their on premise data center then attacks like worms and anything they will be dealing it with themselves they have their own compliance to deal with those techniques or disasters but when they are in the cloud then they had to look for a third party vendor who will be providing those compliances or features to their data when they are in the cloud or when they are provided by the cloud services another thing is latency what latency here is the delay in the round trip time of a data packet so how it is a risk here is although cloud based performance can be very fast there may be bandwidth and latency issues between clouds and on premise but when you want the cloud as a backup target clarify that cloud based performance will be as good or better than the data packets on your own network or the on premise data network then multi tenant issues what is multi tenant that means at the same time there are several other clients or the consumers who are accessing that particular service from the cloud computing 
unless you pay for a dedicated environment, your stored data may be at a risk in multi-tenant settings. Then vendor lock-in is another risk in cloud storage and migration. Once you have migrated data to the cloud, it might be difficult to move between platforms. That means there might be some difficulty in change of the platform. Say for example, if I'm using one application in Google platform or Android platform, say for example, then moving that data to the Apple platform or iOS will be a difficult task. Understand what cloud to cloud migration options are available then to the consumers. Then what are the data storage issues in the cloud when we are going for cloud storage? First thing is two primary cloud storage models. They are long term cold storage and storing active data on cloud computing platforms like software as a service, platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. So what is cold storage now? Storing long term backup data to the cloud seems straightforward, but you have to have some decisions to make. What are they? First, look for the ability to store data in cost effective cold storage. The big three hyperscale clouds that is Amazon, Azure and Google all offer cold storage tires. That means one tire, one tire, two tire, three based upon the priority of the data or the information but their storage and retrieval costs are different understand the pricing for basic storage capacity above threshold capacity and the costs and consequences of data retrieval that means when you are going there then you need to know about three things first thing is what are the charge for basic storage capacity then if you have crossed this basic storage capacity then what will be the charges for that above threshold capacity and then the costs and consequences of data retrieval then also nail down if you can use third party software to add value to your long term stored data such as warm storage and searchability for e-discovery and compliance. Now cloud computing platforms if you are storing active data in a cloud computing environment then you have some additional concerns about the data. There are three primary computing services in the cloud. They are software as a service, platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Then what is software as a service in context to cloud storage and data migration here? Software as a service platform will back up your active data. That means the data which is active, which is in use and we are using it frequently say within 30 days or so but beyond that you are on your own that means the data which you are using quite often and which is active less than 30 days then this will back up that means software as a service will back up only that data which is active and after that that data or information is with the consumer Remember that cloud providers are primarily responsible for availability, not long term data durability. That means data should be available, but you cannot say that the data which they will be providing or which will be provided to the consumers, they will be accounted for its durability. Understand your provider's security and data protection measures for stored data. That means the data which is being stored there. For example, software as a service giant, Microsoft does not back up any of its office services past 30 days and most are considerably less. Look to third party cloud backup and archival products that integrate with software as a service application to protect your software as a service data long term. If now coming back to the another point that is platform as a service. So here if the cloud provider may or may not provide long term data protection to your development platform data, 
अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एंड फिल इन विथ थर्ड पार्टी डेटा प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्ट्स दैट इंटीग्रेट विथ योर क्लाउड वेंडर्स प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस ऑफरिंग दैट मीन्स दो थिंग्स विच इज नॉट बींग प्रोवाइडेड बाई प्लेटफॉर्म एज अ सर्विस देयर देन यू कैन गो फॉर अ थर्ड पार्टी हेल्प एंड यू कैन आस्क टू comply with that platform as a service and provide the whole bunch of services that a particular consumer or the organization of yours need then another service of cloud storage and data migration is in the infrastructure as a service one common use case of infrastructure as a service is migrating a corporate application and data to the cloud for simple rehosting instead of recoding that means we only want our information to be hosted there instead of recoded since the organization is not making major changes to the application code base it is technically simple to migrate the code and its data with some configuration changes the issue is it is going to take time a lot of time to migrate data to the new cloud based infrastructure built in reasonable time frames and data priority when you schedule the migration which could stretch into the months or maybe years then what is cloud migration process the steps or processes an enterprise follows during a cloud migration vary based on the factors such as the type of migration it wants to perform and the specific resources it wants to move that means as per the requirement it depends what time they are going to take and what steps or processes an enterprise is going to follow that said common elements of a cloud migration strategy include evaluating performance and security requirements choosing a cloud provider calculating cost and making any necessary organizational changes common challenges an enterprise faces during a cloud migration include interoperability data and application portability data integrity and security and business continuity without proper planning a migration could negatively affect workload performance and lead to higher it costs thereby negating some of the main benefits of cloud computing services depending on the details of the migration an enterprise may choose to move an application to its new hosting environment without any modifications a model sometimes referred to as a lift and shift migration that means you are not making any sort of changes to the information or the data which we are moving to the cloud we are just lifting it and shifting it to the new location for access and storage in other cases it might be more beneficial to make changes to an application's code or architecture before performing the migration in terms of data transfers from its local data center to public cloud an enterprise also has several options these include the use of public internet a private dedicated network connection or an offline transfer in which an organization uploads its local data onto an appliance and then physically ships that appliance to a public cloud provider which then uploads the data to the cloud the type of data migration an enterprise chooses online or offline it depends on the amount and type of data it wants to move as well as how fast it needs to complete the migration now before backing up or migrating large data sets to the cloud do a proof of concept that is poc commonly considered or needed runs a series of tests including first one is test performance milestones in which we do it backup most occur or backup should occur with backup windows without impacting local computing performance then 
टेस्ट परफॉर्मेंस और लेटेंसी एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स ऑफ द डे नॉट जस्ट एट नाइट then regular backup performance might be fine at night but if you deploy continuous backup for high priority applications you are going to need good performance any time of the day and night if latency issues pops up it is better to know now then later that means when you are taking the test then you should know what kind of latency is there and if it is occurring then you can work on that latency to reduce it then another test which perform here is the test the complexity of data migration and management how time consuming was it to migrate data to the cloud first thing we need to notice then second one is backup and archival migration may be relatively simple but once in the cloud how easy it is to manage then another question which arises here is how good was the support from the cloud provider or the cloud provider the cloud service provider which we are having or which is giving us the services how supportive that particular service provider was vendors are trying to sell you at the poc stage so support will probably the best you will ever get then before signing on the dotted line ask your peers about how good customer support really is provided by that particular cloud service provider while excellent support bodes well for the future indifferent support at this stage will only get worse when you get to the cloud services now managing your stored data in the cloud how we can manage that data when you migrate data to the cloud you still need to manage it this comes as surprise to some businesses who expect the cloud provider to take on most of management responsibilities but it is not like that the truth is that the business is ultimately responsible for their data here you can write management responsibilities into your service level agreement but you must be very clear what you were asking for and getting from it or the getting from service provider in any case the business will need to take an active role in managing their data for capacity cost data protection compliance and performance even if you write those responsibilities into your service level agreement you are still ultimately responsible for protecting and securing your data in the cloud even if you have moved your complete data or information to the cloud still you are responsible to manage it this is where cloud management tools can be an important investment some tool sets work across multiple clouds and others are dedicated to a specific cloud balance breadth and depth if you have a multi cloud strategy and store data in different clouds then you want a tool set that gives you general storage information across all your cloud deployments or if you are exclusively or primarily in a single cloud opt for a tool that is optimized for that particular cloud common data management tool sets features here they include now the another feature which comes here is first one compliance these tools manage cloud security and reporting requirements for sox pci hip aa and others most cloud providers offer some level of compliance security and reporting but compliance tool sets enable customers to customize policies and get in depth reports on the sensitive data another thing or feature here is security basic security management in the cloud includes data access control and encryption specialized tool sets protect stored data with premium security management features such as key management two factor authentication managing security across instance data and user access 
Then another feature is cost tracking. Cost tracking metrics protect the customer from an unpleasant billing surprise. Cost tracking monitors data usage and cost which allows you to adjust your services and control your expenses. This comes in especially handy when your cloud provider changes or it charges high prices for storing data over a basic capacity agreement. Another point here is consolidation. So, these tool sets pool storage resources from multiple clouds into a single platform. Others integrate compute storage, networking and more into a single console for centralized management and reporting across your cloud-based applications and storage. Now cloud migration tools and services, there are various tools and services available to help an enterprise plan and execute a cloud migration. For example, public cloud providers including Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google offer cloud migration services to support private and dedicated networks for data transfers as well as offline migration. Public cloud providers also offer tools to help an enterprise plan and track the progress of a migration. These tools, for example, might collect information about an enterprise's on-premises environment such as system dependencies to help the company make a more informed migration plan. Examples of migration services from public cloud providers are or it includes first one is AWS Migration Hub, then Azure Migrate, then Google Cloud Data Transfer Services, then AWS Snowball, Azure Import Export, Google Transfer Appliance, there are also third party vendors that offer cloud migration services and tools such as CloudVelox, Rekemi and Rivermedo. Thank you.